Ahoy hoy everyone, it's Craig here at Epcot and we are back for another Disney Dining Review on this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. Today I'm joined alongside by Rhino and Erica because we are having lunch at Teppan Ito. And it has been many years for all of us. I believe we all have eaten here before. Uh, we, it's just been many, many years. So we are going to get reintroduced to this restaurant and see how it is. Before we head inside though, I wanna remind you this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you wanna support us, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money and you get the support of one of the awesome Dreams Unlimited Travel agents. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free, no obligation quote. Okay, I am excited. We are getting a meal, we are getting a show, and all we have to do is decide what we actually wanna to eat today. Choices, choices, choices. I don't know, we have to make them. Let's head inside, get started. <laughs> Just taking it as it goes. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, one more. Three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah, I think you are better than me. It's your turn. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so it is yours. And one more onion. <laughs> and one more onion. <laughs> yay, white body with this. Oh, okay. yeah. We sat down and everything was like lightning fast. They took our drink order, they took our meal order, appetizers, all that sort of stuff. 
and it was just like one, go, 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 and now the table is cleared. So um, I think we're gonna do a wrap up outside before I get up and let you know. We ordered a sushi roll, we got some salmon, there was some shrimp, there was a mixed combo, um, and uh, we didn't get dessert, but we, like I said, we're gonna, why don't we take this combo outside because um, it's feeling very, let's just get out of this building. We're outside on the patio, the balcony, whatever you want to call this area of Mitsukoshi that is actually quite wonderful and quiet and shaded right now. So top marks right here for that. But um, the vent fans and uh, there was a lot of eyes on us. So it was, it's a, it, was, it, was, it was a little stressful at the last second there. So I felt like this, would, uh, this is a better atmosphere to discuss what we got. But um, so here's the thing, you get in, you get seated, like uh, if you've ever done hibachi anywhere before, you know that most likely if you're a smaller group, you're gonna get sat with somebody else because they like to maximize those tables. I believe it was about eight chairs that was around the table. Um, you know, you got in, uh, a server comes over, takes your drink order, asks if you want any cocktails or anything like that, um, appetizers or anything. For us, we decided to try one of the sushi rolls as an appetizer because the other side of the restaurant that normally does the sushi isn't open, so I'm just curious too. So we went with a, the spicy roll, which is an eight piece tuna salmon mix with cucumber, seaweed wrap, and volcano sauce. Um, I was thinking seaweed salad for some reason when it said seaweed wrap. I thought most sushi is wrapped in seaweed wrap. So that was a, that, that was a little like, oh, but, um, but I thought the roll was fairly decent. It, um, you know, it was, uh, what did I say? It was $14. Um, it, it, it was, it was, uh, it had plenty of the spicy mayo, which is what I always ask for a side of. And um, so I'm not, I'm not gonna complain about that. I thought it was good between the three of us to share that. I'll let everybody else weigh in when they chat about their stuff. but. Um, then they also take your entree order. And for me, I went with the salmon, which is a six ounce fresh Scottish filet served with spicy yuzu sauce. That was $37. Um, the spicy yuzu sauce was actually like really, really good. I tried it at first and Erica was like, what is that? And I was like, it's like a spicy lemon or something. And um, I didn't know it was yuzu, but as I said that to her, I thought, oh, I bet it's yuzu. Um, so that was, that was really, really good. Um, think like the green sauce that you would get um, with like an enchilada or something like that. Um, it kind of it reminded me a lot of that. But um, they cooked my salmon medium, um, and I am going to be 100% honest. They said it was sushi grade salmon, and that's fine. But I felt like it was right in between that, where it was like not quite like when 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 I have a sushi grade fish, I like it to be firm. Does that make sense? Like solid. This I said texturally um, felt like it was mucus being hung, uh, like kind of just held together by a sear. So texture wise, didn't work out for me. Flavor wise, it was good. Um, we get, you get with this, when you order your meal, you get a whole heaping uh, amount of udon noodles. Always, always good. A bunch of veggies come with that. Um, like there was carrot, cucumber, onions, and- no cucumber, zucchini. Zucchini, I'm sorry, zucchini, not cucumber. Um, onions and carrots, and um, I almost forgot, we all got like the little salads with the ginger dressing on top too, which was, it's very good. Every time I'm always like, oh, here's that salad, but every time I'm like, I love that little salad. Um, but we get that, and then you got a little bowl of white rice on the side uh, as well, and so that was everything there. Um, you know, I don't think anything was bad. I just think it was very expensive, and, um, it moved really quick, which was fine. So like, like I said earlier in the video, it was like a lightning pace, um, which is fine. Cause you know, sometimes you want to sit there for a little while and talk, sometimes you don't. I feel like it was that nice in between for me at least. Um, but other times, you know, with, with, a, with a dining experience like a hibachi, because there's so many elements involved, I like the paced out dining cause you kind of eat, rest, eat, rest. And like, so um, I felt like it was that good, like sort of paced, a little accelerated cause they probably want to turn over the tables here, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was fine. It's one of those, it's one of those things where I feel like there, where I live, there's like at least three really decent, there's a Kobe, there's an urban hibachi, and then there's like an off-brand hibachi place right around my apartment that or I could definitely go to eat at half the price and the food would be probably just as good. So it's a little, it's, it's, I don't know, there was a family that we were sharing the table with. They were from New Hampshire, just off the plane. 
and this was the first thing they did when they got here. So I feel like if you're a family that's got a tradition or something like that, maybe it's here. You've never done it before, maybe give it a try. Uh, just uh, annual pass order discounts, 10% off, but I don't know. I don't know, I guess I'm stalling because I don't know if I would recommend it, but I wouldn't not recommend it, if that makes sense. So I don't want to talk too long about the spicy roll we got, but it was really good. I enjoyed it. I love spicy mayo, so the amount they had on there was great. It was fresh. I'm happy we got sushi. Sushi is one of my favorite things like in the whole world to eat. There's a party going on right behind us. Uh, but for my entree, I got the 10 grilled shrimp, which was $33. I love shrimp, um, but there was nothing out of this world with the meal. I think if you really enjoy hibachi style, I, I would suggest it. But the shrimp, very fresh. You watch them cook it right there. Uh, it was good. I think everything was seasoned really well. I love udon noodles, um, and I thought all the veggies with it were all seasoned really well. Um, white rice is white rice. I'm not like a big rice person, so I didn't really eat it that much, but it was okay. This is not something I would go out of my way for, but it had been a minute since I've eaten here, so I'm glad that we did it again so I can refresh my memory because I didn't really remember what the inside looked like and what the menu was like. I'm really glad we came, but just like how Rhino said, I don't know if I'd be like, oh, you need to come eat here, or, but I also don't feel like I'd be like, oh, this place is horrible, don't go there. I feel like if you are looking for something, like you like Asian food, but you're not too adventurous in that territory, this is a good place to go because you already know the kind of food you're gonna get. But I loved my shrimp, okay? I thought it was really good, but I just don't think it's for everyone, you know? That's just my hot take on that. I guess it's my job now to drive this bus home and I will do just that. Okay, let's go over everything again. Uh, we already talked enough about the sushi that we had. I will reiterate everything that Erica and Rhino said about it. It was really tasty. Uh, for me, on the hindsight of this entire meal, I would have preferred getting one of the desserts that are offered versus the sushi. But you know what, when you enter a restaurant like this, you go in with big eyes and you feel like you have a big stomach and you think you're gonna conquer it all. And ultimately we got to the end and that was not the case. And that green tea ice cream, that was calling my name. The chocolate ginger cake would have been good. The mango cake would have been good. It all would have been good for dessert, but the sushi just put me over the edge. Plus the fact that I ate everything that was put out in front of us. Like uh, they both said, there was white rice. There was the udon noodles with the fresh vegetables in there. There's something comforting about knowing that you come to this restaurant and you're always gonna get both of those as the sides. And they are the perfect accompaniment with whatever you choose to get for your meal. And there's a lot of options. As Rhino said, he got the salmon, Erica got the shrimp. Uh, you could also get a filet mignon. You could get a New York cut steak, a Julian steak, a uh, boneless chicken breast, scallops. Scallops are the most expensive thing at $65. Uh, there were seasonal vegetables with mushrooms and tofu for people who are wanting to eat plant-based. And then they have combinations as well too, like steak and shrimp, steak and chicken, and then shrimp and chicken. And that's ultimately where I went with it. Uh, since there was only three of us, I wanted to try to get a lot more of the menu than, uh, than we would if we each had just ordered one thing. So I went with a combo. I got the steak and chicken, and that was $43. And not gonna lie, everything is seasoned well, but it is just, it's so basic, like in terms of the seasonings, it's salt and pepper, and then on some of the, the meats, you know, they'll throw so soy sauce on there too. And so ultimately, it's all just kind of one note with the flavors, uh, because like the chicken, it's fine chicken breast. Uh, the steak that we got in the combo, they said it was the New York cut. Uh, it probably was, uh, it was definitely thinner than if you would have just ordered a regular New York cut. For an additional $10, I could have ordered a filet, and. I am kind of regretting not doing it, but at the same time too, I don't want to spend that much money on this lunch. So I'm, I'm okay with what I did from it, but it was just, it was all one note in terms of the flavors and not disappointing by any means, but I, I just, 
I wanted something else. And of course, they serve everything with the yum yum sauce and the ginger sauce. And those definitely will take the meal to the next level, whether you put them on your noodles, your rice, all of your meats, whatever you want to put it on. I get the entire concept and I understand the fun of it. Our chef was incredible. She was extremely entertaining. She was efficient with her cooking. Uh, it was the it was the perfect dinner and an experience with it. And like you cannot, uh, you can't go wrong with that. But overall, I feel like, I feel like it's not necessarily that it's Americanized, but there's something that's just not that exciting about it. Like when you think about World Showcase, you like the idea and possibilities that maybe you're gonna get flavors that you can't get anywhere else. But with, with this restaurant in particular, it's like, no, no, this is, it's like with mine, it was steak and chicken and rice and udon noodles. So it just wasn't, it wasn't that extravagant. And I hate saying it because like, I, I felt like the for the portion that you get, it was worth the price. Uh, I think other people might disagree here that it was a little bit on the overpriced side, but you know what? You are getting the show element with it, so you have to factor that in. The food was was solid. Just for me, it doesn't hold that same appeal as I think it used to when I didn't constantly go to restaurants like this. And yeah, I'm just... I don't know, my feelings on it might change in a little bit and sometimes that's like the nice thing about doing reviews and waiting a little while to talk about it because your feelings will change a little bit more. But right now I'm just walking away from it being like, eh, I'm full, but I don't know if I'm necessarily satisfied with everything that just happened. The salad is awesome though. That salad with the ginger dressing, if I could go in there and just order a giant bowl of that and that's the only thing I have and then I walk out, I would actually leave very happy because it is, it's a, I want a big salad of that because that dressing is excellent. And then everything else after it, it was fun. I had great company here for it, but yeah, I don't know. This all probably would have been different if we would have had one more person here who would have got either steak or chicken and then I would have ordered the scallops and I probably would have been like, let's go, $65 scallops. How can this hold up? Can't. But uh, I don't. I might be in a. I might be in a complete different mind space. But for what I had, again, I'll reiterate it for the 19th time. Meh. But I think that's it. Besides how much it cost, and while it wasn't cheap, it also, in my opinion, wasn't super expensive. Uh, Erica's entree, just to uh, say it again. Her 10 shrimp was $33. Rhino salmon was $37. My combo was $43 and the sushi roll was $14. So when all was said and done, our total for those three items was uh, after tax about $135. And then the additional tip on there. So uh, it's right around in the same price point of when Panda, Eric and I dined at Mama Melrose's. Uh, it's very, very close in pricing to that. I feel like we got way more food and I was even more uncomfortable than here, but I, I just feel like I keep saying the same things over. There is a show element here that you also, you know, it's hard to tack a price onto that. But that's going to do it for this now long-winded Disney dining review that barely happened inside the restaurant. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did and you want to support us more, you can book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no-obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Uh, always, of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave comments, questions, and video suggestions in the comments section. And if you listen to the Disney Dining Show as a podcast, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave ratings and reviews when possible. But again, that's it for this Disney Dining Review on this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next time with another Disney Dining Review. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay hungry. Yummy, yummy.